and souls of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear these words of our Lord Jesus Christ. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We are going to observe a moment of silence as we reflect on our hearts, especially the last week. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. He says, come to me all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. St. John Father says, if we claim to be, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us now confess our failure to keep God's commandments and confess all our sins, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all our neighbors. Together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you and against word and deed and in what we have not done. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Today is the 19th Sunday after Trinity. Let us join together in the collect. O oh God, for as much as without you we are not able to please you, must we grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We are going to praise and worship the Lord our God, being led by this great choir.
He has brought us together. You're going to turn to your neighbor and welcome them. Tell them, family, I welcome you in Jesus' name. This is all part of today's worship. As a family, turn to them, turn to them and tell them, family, I welcome you in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. And so we are going to celebrate our cultures as a family. Eba chica, oye! Okay, let me take it this way. Everyone from the eastern side, oh yeah. Everyone from the western side, oh yeah. Everyone from the central, oh yeah. Every soul from the south, south, Bafumbira, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> Anybody from the north? Oh, yeah! Hey. Now, there's this song. Chaplain, I'm not sure we are going to do a matual holding hands. Is it okay? Now you're going to pass your hand onto your neighbor. Just, 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 just pass your two hands. Uh, amen. Everyone, and just swing around a little. It says we are together in Jesus Christ.
Nava Yesu, to lead the Sangalo.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you have a reason to thank God for? Do you have a reason to thank God for? Now thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. He's killed us. You are not yet in the statistics of COVID. You are here. You are well. No Ebola. In Jesus' name, we are protected. We are healed. We are delivered. Uncle Ben is here. Give God a mighty hand clap of praise. <laughs> you know, the other day, I was driving from Kasese, I think, two months ago, in a twinkling over and I almost got an accident. Someone came into my lane. As in, I was okay. But it was just in a minute that I was going to die. Somehow, I am here leading praise and worship. <laughs> yes! He's a faithful God. Just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Just lift up your hands. Now tell him. All my life you have been faithful. Talk to him. All my life you have been so, so good. In every breath. In every breath.
to lead your church. Reverend Father, as the Anglican Church in Uganda, I want to lift you, the Archbishop, His Grace Stephen Kazimba Mugaru. We want to lift you, all the bishops in various dioceses. We pray, Heavenly King, that Lord, you guide them as they lead your ship, O oh Lord God. I pray, King of Glory, that they will draw strength from the Holy Spirit. That as they make decisions, O oh Lord, that those decisions will be guided by you, O oh King of Glory. We frustrate every scheme of the enemy concerning your church, concerning the leadership of the church. Lord, it's you who say that you will build your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Lord God, I pray that you arise and scatter those enemies of your church, O oh Lord. Make your church strong, O oh King of glory. Bring revival in your church, O oh Heavenly Father. King of kings, we want also to lift you the clergy, serving you in various dioceses, in various parishes, in various chaplaincies, O oh Lord God. We pray, King of glory, that you fill them with your Holy Spirit, O oh Lord that the fruit of the Holy Spirit will be evident in their lives, that the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit will be evident in their lives in increasing measure. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that we are gathered here at St. Francis Church. We want to lift you our leader, Reverend Onesimus Asimwe, and the clergy he serves with. We pray, King of glory, that you pour your Holy Spirit upon him, upon them, O King of glory, that, Lord God, they will lead your church, Lord, to green our pastures, to streams of living water, O King of glory. And Heavenly Father, we pray that honor and glory indeed will be given unto you in your church, O King of glory. Lord, in your mercy. Yes, we want to lift the nations of the world to the Lord, including Uganda. Father Almighty, we give you thanks and praise for the nation of Uganda and other nations. You have a destiny for every nation, O oh Lord. And Lord God, you desire that righteousness and justice reign in all the nations of the world. We pray, King of glory, that righteousness and justice will reign in Uganda. We want to lift you, Lord God, our very own president. His Excellency Yoel Kaguta Museveni, we pray that you give him wisdom from your throne room, O King of Glory. We lift to you, O Heavenly Father, the ministers, the MPs, and all the people that you have given authority, O Lord God, to govern over us, O Lord God. We pray, King of Glory, that the fear of God will be in them, because, Lord God, your word says that the fear of you is the beginning of wisdom. They need wisdom, O King of glory, to lead this nation. Heavenly King, we also pray that for righteousness to reign, we pray for integrity to reign, we pray that you, you, you will install men and women of integrity in various positions in this nation, O King of glory. And Lord God, we pray that you deal with the corruption that is eating up this nation, O King of glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We give you thanks and praise, O Lord God, for our families. We want to lift you, our families. Each one of us belongs to a family. We lift you, husbands, in our families. We want to lift you, wives, in our families. We want to lift you, children, in our families. You desire that families live together in unity, in harmony, O oh Lord God. But Lord God, some of our families, Lord, those are absent. We pray, Lord God, for reconciliation between husband and wife. We pray, King of glory, that there will be forgiveness, that where they have wronged to each other, O oh Lord God, that they will forgive each other. We also pray, Lord God, that our children, we will honor our, the parents, O oh Lord. We respect that, the parents because your word says that respect your father and mother so that you live long. We pray, King of glory, 
for reconciliation in our families, O oh Lord. We frustrate every scheme of the devil concerning our families, O oh King of glory. We pray that our families will honor you, O oh King of kings. Heavenly Father, today we are gathered here in this Freedom Square in Makelele University. We want, Lord God, to lift to you this university, O oh Lord, which is celebrating 100 years of existence in this year, O oh King of Glory. We want to thank, to lift to you the leadership of this university. We lift to you, Lord God, the Chancellor of this university, who is here with us. We want to lift to you the Vice Chancellor, the entire administration, O oh Lord God, the deputies, O oh Lord God, and all the lecturers in this university, and all the students of this university. We pray, King of Glory, that you take Makerel University to another level, that in these 100 years to come, O oh King of Glory, that we shall be at a higher, very, very high level, O oh Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We pray that Makerel University we will glorify your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. King of kings and Lord of lords, we also want to thank you for the opportunity to gather together to listen to your word. You have said, Lord God, that all scripture is inspired by God and it is useful for teaching, for correction, for rebuking, for training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I pray, King of glory, that as your word is preached, Lord God, that, Lord God, it will do that, that you have said it will do in our lives. We lift to you, the preacher, Lord God, the Reverend Canon Dr. Senyon, O oh Lord, a vessel that you chose before the foundations of the world, that today he speaks out your word. Lord, we pray for your special anointment upon him, O oh Lord, anointing upon him. Let every word that is going to speak be your very word, and let this word lead to the transformation of lives. We give you thanks and praise, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Let us share the grace together as we look at each other in the face and give a smile. Yes, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now. Amen. Praise God. Yes. We are going to have the ministry of the word. And the ministry of the word is going to be read by Mr. Dickens to Muhimbise. Please come and read that word. And then the epistle will be re read by Professor S. Zakakudidi. Good morning, family. Praise God. And God is good. Our first reading is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, from verse 19. Our first reading is from the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, from verse 19. If you are there, say amen. Great is your faithfulness. Remember my, uh, my affliction and my wandings, the homewood and the girl. My soul continues, continually remembers it and is brought down within me. 
But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I, wi I will hope in him. Receive the word of the Lord. church. The epistle is from 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 to 7. Praise be to, Sorry. praise be to the God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same suffering we suffer. And our hope for you is firm, because we know that just as you share in our sufferings, so also you share in our comfort. This is the word of God. Please, Reverend Musa, please come for the mic. Hmm? Okay, sorry. The gra we are going to have the graduate hymn before the gospel. <laughs>
shall keep standing for the gospel reading. Our gospel reading today is taken from the gospel according to Matthew, chapter 5. Matthew 5, verses 1 to 4. We read. Now, when he saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began teaching them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. May I invite the children to come forward for a blessing. Children, children. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light of God. We are walking in the light we are walking in the light of God. We are walking, we are walking, we are walking in the light of God. We are walking, we are walking, we are walking in the light. Children, children, Jesus loves me, 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 Hallelujah, eh, eh, oh, Jesus loves me, Hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh, 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 Jesus loves me. Hallelujah, oh, 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 Jesus loves me. We shall stretch our hands to the children and may I invite Uncle Ben to do kindly bless these, our dear children. God, uh, our Father, you have been, the adults, you have been instructed to raise your hand of blessing to these children. And God, our Father, we bless these, our children, in your holy name. We ask that, Lord, as they study your word, as they assemble in their church, you definitely will teach them what you want them to know. That out of St. Francis, they will grow in formidable ministers of your holy word. Lord, we pray that these children, what, are, what is being taught to them, will remain in their hearts all the time until it bears more fruit and more fruit and more fruit in jesus name amen, amen. amen. i now invite Where are the, children going? the children are going to that tent for their for their services Please, teachers and parents, take your student to the, the other tent. Yes. The song, the song has been Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, oh, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me, Jesus loves me. oh,
Brother Chaplain to give us notices. Uh, that, that kind of welcome is really not... Uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, at least. At least, at least. I, I need to feel loved and accepted. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are, we are going to shout, by the way. There was an argument between uh, a Pentecostal pastor and an Anglican priest. And the, it was about noise, you know, praying loudly. And the Anglican priest was saying, but the Bible says that God's ear is not so far that he should not hear us, you know. So must you shout in order for God to listen to you. And the... Pentecostal pastor said, well, I know that uh, God's ear is not too far from us to hear us, but neither does he have a heart condition <laughs> that when you shout, he faints. So, so we are going to shout a big hallelujah three times. One, two, three, go. Hallelujah. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, no, no. That is uh, 40%. Let's do it again. One, two, three, go. Hallelujah. Again. Hallelujah. One more time. Hey, Amen. At least, at least that is... Uh, that was still 95%, but that's okay. And I want to invite uh, Dr. Milton. Where is Dr. Milton? Uh, beyond that. Please come quickly if you can. And... Uh, having exalted Jesus, because Jesus must always be, the cross must always be above culture. Now, Dr. Milton Wabiona can do what he does best about Makerere. Oh, yeah, why not? Why are you saying, yes, about Makerere. Emakere! Emakere zai! Elumboksa, eh? A Mishlek Zoy, the Afro Stone Zoy, Ra, Ah, Cha, Aro. Yeah, that is to remind you that we are at the Freedom Square and that St. Francis Chapel is a university chapel. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, St. Francis Chapel is a university chapel. Yeah, some people forget that. Yeah. So, having uh, welcomed you that way, I would like, in a special way, to recognize the presence of the Chancellor of Mackay University, Professor Ezra Suruma. And your dear wife, Mrs. Spey. Suruma, you are welcome. We are also honored to be worshiping with the Vice Chancellor of this great university, <laughs> Professor Barnabas Nawangwe, and your dear wife, Susan, and your daughter. Please do stand. I think if you, if, uh, yeah, if you turn a little bit, please, if you turn a little bit, then the cameras will capture you, and, and people will see you on the giant screens. Yeah, there should, there should have been another camera this way, by the way. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And uh, I think as the... I had somebody say recently, I think I'm not good at protocol as well, because I think we have uh, some members of the University Council uh, present. At least I can see Professor Hale Nambirua. Uh, if there's any other, please do stand. And uh, I apologize for 
uh, not, uh, yeah, good, good, welcome. Uh, the Dean of Students is also here, Mrs. Winnie uh, Kabumbuli. And uh, I know that the Vice Chancellor will later on rescue me by introducing others, but we have invited principals of colleges. Uh, we have invited quite a number of people, the academic staff, the non-teaching staff, uh, the professors present, and uh, you are all welcome. Now, the students of Makere University, are you here? Uh, by show of hands, by show of hands, the Makere Hoye. Ah, quite a number. Quite, I think you can stand. Then you'll feel important. And let the rest, let the rest welcome you. Welcome, welcome, uh, continuing students. Do we have any freshers? You're supposed to report today, but you never know. Any fresher? If there's any fresher, please do stand. Ah, oh. wow, wow, quite a number, quite a number. Now the freshers, the freshers, you walk here quickly. Yeah. You walk here so that the chancellor of the university may see what, what a fresher looks like. <laughs> I wonder how you managed to come. You're supposed to report today. But come, keep coming. Let's welcome them. Let's, let's give them. Yeah. You're also a fresher? Ah, uh, for, oh, this is, this is a vet. Masters. Oh, okay. I thought I knew Dr. Joan. Masters. Okay. Now, any other? You know, sometimes they are scared. Uh, but the reason for parading you here is to make a statement and say that we love you. And you're welcome, St. Francis Chapel. <laughs> the, 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 the university authorities will, will welcome you to Makere University. But welcome and uh, make this your home. Make this your home. There are going to be so many people coming to market their churches and all kinds of... Uh, this coming week is going to be like a marketplace. But for you, you are already at home. Amen? So, you will fill that card so that we can know you. And we are going to have lots of activities for you this week. Uh, you may now go back and be seated. I would like to introduce the clergy present. We have uh, the Reverend Scovia Komagum. Uh, well, now, people need to know you. Please come. And don't be in a hurried seat. Some people don't know their clergy. Uh, because she's the priest in charge of the Lugbar ministry. Thank you. You may be seated. The Reverend Irene Akankwasa. The priest in charge of family life ministries. The Reverend Fanny Bwesije. And uh, the Reverend Wilfred Tusuvira. They are the priests in charge of Muwarik, Makere University, Agricultural Research Institute, Kabanyoro. Uh, excuse me, just in case you came with your wives or your spouse. Is the engineer here? I think he's here. Please do stand so that you are Engineer Justice Akankwasa. Uh, welcome. I would like to introduce the Reverend Samuel Muwonge. Uh, Richard, I beg your pardon. Richard Muonge. Mulindwa Muonge. Uh, some people don't know the other name. 
Yes. Uh, he is uh, part of us, and he is in charge of school ministries. Yeah. We have uh, a number of schools, Makero College School, uh, two campuses. Uh, there is Excel, uh, Millennium Excel in Chengera. There is uh, Narek in Amirembe. So we, we oversee quite a number of schools, and he's doing a good job. Uh, the Reverend uh, Musa Sambu Sanjira. And you, I think you're pointing at your wife somewhere. Ah, very good. <laughs> very good. Uh, this is, uh, he works with the province, uh, Provincial Secretary at Church of Uganda, as the coordinator of Christian Muslim evangelism. Uh, but he's doing his pastoral uh, ministry, ecclesiastical ministry with us at St. Francis Chapel. He's still uh, a deacon, as you can see, but he's doing a good job. Uh, perhaps in December, you may be priesthood. December 10th. All right. Uh, I would like to introduce the clergy who served here and retired as chaplains and other priests. Uh, we invited all of them, but a number gave apologies. Uh, but here with us is uh, the famous uh, Uncle Ben, the Reverend Canon. <laughs> Benoni. Benoni Mutana Mugarura. He's also pointing at his wife, Aunt Joy. This is home for you. I think you served here longest. Was it 18 years? 19 years. Uh, so, we bless the Lord for the good health that he has given you. Aunt Joy looks uh, 50 something. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, the Reverend Rose Abema also served here. The Reverend Deo Okecho, who served as a mission coordinator, Dice of Kampala. Welcome. I would also like to introduce uh, Sandra. Sandra is doing her pastoral uh, placement at Cabanyoro. Uh, so it also means that young ladies can say yes to the calling, uh, to the ordination ministry. Now, uh, others gave their apologies, as I said, but we are now privileged to introduce the preacher of the day, uh, who is uh, well known in this nation and beyond, a seasoned evangelist, the Reverend Canon Dr. John Senyonyi. And uh, his dear wife, who you're also pointing there. Okay. Uh, this is Canon. Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi. She's a counselor and uh, a great support to you for your ministry. We thank God for your lives, for your testimony, and uh, we are looking forward to the ministry that God has placed in your heart for us. And I, can, I would like to prophesy that we are going to have a big harvest today. In the name of Jesus. Yeah, that's a prophecy. It is almost obvious, but let, let, let me pronounce it. Amen? I wouldn't, of course, uh, forget Mrs. Me, uh, Florence Asimwe, who is also here. And uh, you know, everybody matters. We have the uh, chief registrar of judiciary, uh, Mrs. Uh, Sarah, your worship, uh, Sarah Siwu. And your hubby, and your hubby, who is the treasurer of uh, St. Francis Chapel, welcome in your capacity, of course. The, the, the chief registrar is number four in judiciary. 
So that's not a simple person. We have uh, canons, uh, lay canons, uh, uh, Frank, Katsime, and Helen, Absalom, and uh, Josephine, please do stand. Uh, in the Anglican setting, you, you, you are important. We have uh, members of the Chapel Council led by uh, Mr. Peter Kiza, please stand. All members of the Chapel Council, please do stand. We appreciate the good job you are doing. And also for okaying that we should have this family Sunday. It is quite expensive, uh, but you, you were happy with it. We bless the Lord. I think uh, this must be Doreen. Now, you and your sister, you, you come together. Uh, Doreen is, uh, is a wife of a member of parliament, and the other one is a member of parliament. Now, who is who? Is who? Please come together. They are identical twins. They always confuse me. So you need to tell us who, who, is, who, who is the MP, who is, you know. Praise God, Church. I'm called Dorothy Nyakato, Zibonera, Woman Member of Parliament, Chitagwenda District. Praise God, Church. Amen. I'm called Doreen Nyangoma, Abigaba the wife to Honorable Abigawa Cuthbert, the MP Chivare, Kamweje District. <laughs> <laughs> now you understand. How would you, how would you tell who is who? You know? And uh, uh, so I sometimes say you are either Doreen or, you know, <laughs> when I meet them. I would like to apologize. This was uh, like, uh, I, I don't think I'm worthy to be introducing the bishop, but we have um, in our midst uh, the bishop, the right reverend David Sebuhinja, who is, uh, I think the reason I even forgot is he's a member of, of St. Francis Chapel, but we are so honored to have you today in this service, uh, Bishop David. Welcome. And before I forget, I would like to appreciate the organizing committee that put this together. They have been working day and night, uh, led, chaired by uh, Peter Kiza, the chairperson of uh, the, I beg your pardon, the head of Leite, and your team, uh, if you are close and you're not working, please come here. Sebastian, uh, all right. And uh, Sarah, Bob, all of you, please do come. Let's give it up for them. Let's give it up for them. I don't know when they put up this thing. I, I think they worked the whole, all night long. And uh, some of us only ride on the achievements, on the efforts of others. Um, but these people have worked very, very hard. Moses is the uh, chairman of Fathers Union. Uh, Leticia Iguma is, is president of uh, Happy Wives uh, Club. And the husband is the MC today. You will see him shining. Uh, he's uh, the Bob Buga is an IT guru and a hands-on person. Sarah Munezero is the chapel administrator. Chrissy is uh, the Vaja stroke custodian, St. Francis Chapel. Now, let me embarrass uh, a young lady very quickly. Docas, uh, please come. Uh, Docas, come and stand next to somebody. You choose who you want to stand next to. And uh, then I will make this quick announcement. Aha. Uh -huh. Now, Sebastian, all right, uh, to Musime. <laughs> so loved Uganda that he decided to marry a Ugandan. And uh, he discovered that his rib was somewhere in Soroti. 
<laughs> so come the 28th of this month, they will tie the knot here at St. Francis Chapel. You may be seated. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, we have a lot of people working, Mother's Union, you'll see them in the uniform, Father's Union, they're clad in their black suits and red ties. We have this one announcement to make. This one announcement to make. Please eat our food. Please eat our food. Now, the reason I'm emphasizing this is because St. Franciscans never eat our food. After the service, you see them disappearing. Please eat our food. And we, we are already arranging, as you can see, many service centers. And we have enough food to serve everybody that is here today. So please stay and eat our food. Otherwise, we are going to spend a lot of money. Uh, but as you know, there can never be a, sh a shortage of eaters. So if you go, we shall go to the uh, highways and byways and uh, go to Katanga, go to, so people will eat the food. Now, Family Sunday, some of you, this is the first Family Sunday you are attending. How many of you are saying, this is my first Family Sunday? You see, the majority of you, because the last we had was in 2019 before COVID-19. So welcome to Family Sunday, which simply means all the services, 7 o'clock, 9, 11, 1 o'clock, uh, 4 p.m. and, uh, and Cabanyoro, they all come together. That's why we are a mammoth gathering. And uh, so apart from the usual St. Franciscans who gather here, I would like to introduce the Lugbar service. Uh, those of you who attend Lugbar, would you like to stand? Lugbar, led by the Reverend Scovia. Aha, uh -huh. oh, oh yes, Esther. Yeah, that's right, you went there. Somebody took you there. Yes, Ramov Zizaru. I'm not hearing you. Yes, Ramov Zizaru. Azi, Imichichi Yesu Marusi. Amen, amen. What have I just said? <laughs> for, for these who don't know our language. Praise the Lord. I greet you all in Jesus' name. Ah, you see? Okay, so you are all welcome, and uh, we bless the Lord that finally... We have had this service. I was worried that the president last night would say we have closed uh, churches again, but thank God that we are able to meet. <laughs> now this Family Sunday also launches our annual university mission, dubbed MacFest. So, MacFest begins today. Amen? And for the entire week, we are going to be evangelizing uh, house to house, door to door, person to person. We shall move to offices. We shall move to halls of residence. We shall go to the hostels in Chikoni, everywhere. And we shall be having evening outdoor meetings. And so please welcome the missionaries when you see them. And... Uh, we are praying for a very big harvest. We thank God that we can launch into the new century for this university with mission, with the gospel. And this is a very important gate. Now, before I conclude, I would like to introduce another very special person uh, who served here in the time of Uncle Ben and uh, he was also a lecturer at Makere University for a long time in the School of Education. Uh, this is uh, the Reverend Uncle Sam Tumwesijire and your dear wife Penina. Uh, please do stand and if you can uh, face the cameras behind you, then uh, 
some people will remember you. Uh -huh. Please do welcome this couple. Amen. Amen. And they did an amazing work here, especially in the ministry of healing and deliverance. Anybody who knows Uncle Sam will associate him with that ministry. And uh, in their old age, because you're not young anymore, uh, the Lord has impressed it on the hearts of many uh, whose lives they have touched to construct a retirement house for them. And uh, I would like to invite my friend uh, Moses, Mr. Moses Vajendera, to come and give us highlights of that project uh, in the shortest time possible and then tell us how we can support this ministry because uh, this is what church exists for. Uh, please do come, come this way. Come, do, come this way. I fear passing in front of the preacher. <laughs> when you are allowed, you can. Praise the Lord. Uh, I have a slide I hope to be projected. Uh, my name is Moses Bajendera. Um, I was here many years ago. I was talking to Uncle Sam, who is now 83, and his wife Penina, 80. They left Makere in 2000. So they are now retired. So a group of us, um, we've been supporting them to put up a home where they can call home. And uh, our architects, engineers from this university, we came together and we've been putting up a house for them. Uh, as you can see, that house is at the roofing stage. We had planned to use 120 million. Right now, yeah, you can see it. It's on Nangabo Road, uh, Matuga, I mean Kasangati, Nangabo Road. Uh, that house will cost 120 million. Next slide. We have been working. Right now, it is at the roofing level. Uh, we want to pray that you support us to do a roof at 18 million and also the shutters, the bagara proof at 7 million, making a total of 25 million Uganda shillings. Uh, we have a pledge card, which is with the ushers. We want to seek your support to support uh, uh, our retired clergy. The Bible says that even in the old age, they will yield fruit. They are still very active. So the ushers have this. In case you are led to support this couple, please, you can fill up the pledge card. I will collect it and will follow you up so that we get it. We are believing that this couple can be in their home by Christmas so that uh, during Christmas they are able to move from renting to their own personal home as a, pre as a Christmas gift. Thank you very much, Kanu. Amen. So, so the ushers, uh, please, those who are, would like to support, uh, if you see an usher, ask them for the pledge card and fill it. And now before we receive God's word, because this is the most important part of this family Sunday, and uh, we, we really are looking forward to the message that God has placed on, on your heart. Our theme for, the, for Markfest and also for family Sunday is hope beyond affliction. Uh, please tell your neighbor, there is hope beyond affliction. Amen. And so I'm going to request our ministers of uh, today in praise and worship. I am not sure what to call you because you are, is the, I see pioneers, but some of you are not pioneers. You are being, you are being groomed. Let me, let's invite and welcome the praise team to lead us in a song as we prepare to receive the sermon. And after the song, the drama team will come with a skit to prepare the way uh, for the preacher. May God bless you all 
And may God's presence be your portion as the service uh, unfolds.
Okay, so Atamba, how are you? How is life? How have you been? How is your daughter? You know, it's been long. Madam Councillor, mm, I, I, I am very sorry for coming yes, to you before you entering the office. Yes, please. But I don't know. You see, two months ago, yes, my wife my wife left me. She went with some good rich man called Blair. Seriously? Now, I don't even... She left us with... Uh, she left me and my daughter alone. Because how many children do you have? I only have this one. Okay. Now, you see, I have been a father. I have been working. I have been everywhere. So, I don't even know how to raise this girl. Oh, I can imagine. I am scared. I don't even know what to do. I can imagine. How are you, Atamba? How is life? But do you even know that daddy does not even sometimes cook for us, sometimes even sleep hungry? Are you sure? You man, get serious. Does it mean that when your wife leaves you, then you don't have to cook for your children? Now, let me tell you. For me, I am annoyed. Me, I'm tired. I know. Hmm? I know you can be annoyed. But I mean, even if you're annoyed, you man, uh, take care of your, your child. I mean, you don't need to wed again, you don't need to get another wife because your child has, you, because the mother has left you, you know? Uh -huh. Stop touching me, did we come when we were talking? Okay, Shh. you have to man up, be man enough, take care of her. Who is this? Come on, what's the problem? Come Are here. You? Hey, Sebo. Lucky, just wait, what's the problem? You ask him his own who dragged what's me What's the problem? Here. You come, you come, you know I'm get close. close at your wife. You Please, be real, come. did we come when you were talking? I can't close. Come. Uh -huh. I said come. I don't want. Come in the middle, come. That two shall become one. Come close. If it is becoming one, I don't want. Okay. <laughs> She's the problem. It is, oh, come closer. Please. She's the problem. Come closer, please. So tell me, what's the problem? Ah, the problem is here. This is the whole problem. You talk. Am I here? No, eh, you're already taking sides. Yeah? Uh -huh. so I they knew. also know you. No, no, I knew. No, I knew. I know this no, let me tell you, the whole truth is, let us be fair and everyone does what they said they were going to do when we were getting married. Okay, tell me, tell me now, tell me. Anes, we are in the 21st. Wait, wait, tell me. Anes, talk. Ah, you so, talk. It, 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 you, you, you are her talk. counselor, you, you are her counselor. Okay. Me, I'm a counselor. And you see how it is like, in, like this, yeah. that is how we are always okay. at home. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Before we go too far, first Please. ask him for his ring. Okay, wait. Ask him for his ring. Now, who should I ask first? Now, uh, okay, let's, let's let me tell you the truth. You know, we've been married for, for four years. And we are still two of us. Do we really need a maid in our home? You yeah? answer it. Do we oh, need a maid? Me? No. Do we need a maid? Can you imagine? I for, work. For the, for, you for, talked. For, I allowed you to talk. For Why the rest four years, I have, okay, not, I have eaten food her. from the restaurant only. Okay. The, do you, you eat from the restaurant? The question is, do you eat? <laughs> Let me, I work, he works. He, ex, he expects me to wake up in the morning, cook for him breakfast, iron for him, brush his shoes. And for him, meanwhile, he is in bed snoring. I wake him up. He just bathes. And I am working, looking for money. And to okay, can you listen to me? I have heard. Okay. okay, so afterwards, mm. he goes in the car and starts hooting. Mm -hmm. In the evening, when we come back, meanwhile, I come first. He expects me to cook, and he comes at 2 a.m., mm. and he expects me to wake up to and warm him with his food. A.m. in the night. I am looking for money. Money at 2 a.m. Yes. At 2 a.m. So that these nails should go in Visaniko, in Ichako, to cook for a man who comes at one, wake up and warm the food. Okay. Really. I also have nails. I also cook. I yes. also pee. Thank you. But then, listen, don't say thank you. At 8 a.m., where are you coming from? To look for money. Do you work shift midnight shift? Do you work? Thank you. No, no, okay. Let's, let's do it no, like Another this. thing I'm is, he has very many female friends and I'm uncomfortable the way they call him Marit in the night. I don't like you, are, you have evidence. Eh? I have okay. it. We always talk about it. He quarrels okay. about it. Okay, is it true? Okay. Ah, it is right. Okay, I have heard, but let me tell you. Let me tell you now, in this marriage... Me, I want it ended. It's no longer a No, marriage. it is not going to end just like that. I want that. it ended. You're not the first one. 
even those who are married for 20 years. Unless he's married at all, you go there if you want. Me, I'm not going there. I'm already there, I mean. Lucky, you came here to ask for guidance. Me, I did not come. But you don't listen. Okay, fine. You don't, but let me tell you, even when you're married, you, you are going to, to, to re, you first wait. You wait. Kabogos. Kabogos. Chichati. The same person, same, almost every month he has a problem. Kabogos. Tansara. Kansara. Yogera, yogera, baby, you be man. This is my medical report. Mm -hmm. I have been diagnosed with the diphtheria, coccidiosis, <laughs> cancer. Mm -hmm. I have COVID <laughs> in one <laughs> leg. And I have Divico in another. Divico is the opposite of COVID. Counselor, <laughs> what is wrong with me? You are the problem, I think. Counselor, mm. look, report Divico, COVID. <laughs> look at me. My, even my looks are going. My feet are now all facing left. Left and right. Cancer. I told you I was in love. Yes, by the way. You I gave me good exactly advice. Exactly, I remember. I bought the roses. I know. I bought the ice cream. And she was excited. Eh, eh. Hey. But now she has become a nun. Katona. <laughs> Really, do I look that bad that she has to give up on all men? Really? Counselor, let me tell you, if I was a weed in agriculture, mm. I think I would be wandering Jew. <laughs> because I wonder... I think I am what they call Okuzaris Latiferia. Look my results. I came to you, counselor. Yes, please. I'm tired of begging on the streets. I can imagine. I am looking for a job. Okay. You told me to humble myself. Yes, please. Stand right by CV. Munange, mm. they called me for the yes, interview. You told me congratulations. No, wait, congratulations. wait. Don't congratulate me. They asked me for my transcript. Yes, and you came here. I came to Makerele. Look, it got burnt. <laughs> it got burnt. What is wrong with me? Anyway, I told them that the main building was burnt. They understood. Hallelujah. Amen. I was given a job. Can I tell you? Mm. I am now an RDC. <laughs> Wait! <laughs> I am an RDC. Yes. I was supposed to rework, to go to work tomorrow. Yes. And it's okay. I was posted in Mubende. No, it is so close. That's so the close. The guy has a brother. A brother. <laughs> now the president said Mubende. He's in a lockdown. What is wrong with me? Come on, come on, come close. First come. Let me tell you. Let me tell you, your life is like nothing now. I, I don't have a solution. I've been counseling. People have met many people. People have problems. But yours are beyond. In fact, I want to know the tribe, where you come from. I want to know your clan because I mean his problems are too much. Like every month he comes. <laughs> <and he's laughs> wait, wait. Come on, Goza. Eh? I am sorry. I have given up on you. You have given up? Yes, I am. 
Uncle Ben. Uncle Ben. Do you also understand me? Me neither. I don't get you. You guys. Cancel, even you are running. <laughs> Church. Church, let me tell you. Even if you are like me, even if you're going through affliction, Auntie Joy, there is still hope. Ah. Please give them another hand clap. They make us smile, but they also relate with us through drama, isn't it? That we go through these kinds of moments. Praise the Lord. Uh, first of all, let me just add my joy to stand here to what the chaplain said, to have my dear friend the Chancellor and his wife, the Vice Chancellor and your wife, we are so glad to have you here. Let me not go through the entire protocol. People are welcomed and I'm here to speak the word of God. And it's a joy for us to be here with my dear wife, Canon Dr. Ruth Senyonyi. Although he made her stand up, I also have a right. Right? Can I ask you to come here and greet the people? Please. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise him indeed. Amen. It's such a blessing to be here this morning. Is it already? Is it afternoon? Morning. We bless the Lord for all of you. I know that Skit um, gave up on this guy. I am a counselor by profession, <laughs> and we don't give up people, we point them to the Lord. We thank God, Chaplain, for inviting us today and for being here today. Um, as I was thinking about Family Day, um, I think my whole life has been around family. As President Mother's Union, as a counselor, family has always been close to my heart. And um, I remember my son one time, he's an architect. He told me, Mommy, it's terrible. People who come to you are crying when they come for counseling. But the people who go to him in architect, for architecture work, they go with a lot of money and they are happy because they are building houses like they are building for Reverend Sam. They go with money and they build a house. Then I said, well, the good thing is when they come from me, then I send them to you. <laughs> so there is hope. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. That's my wife of over 37 years. And the Lord has been good to us. We have four children. And we love saying that. We are family people. We love our family passionately. And three of those children are married. Uh, we are still waiting for the other one also to find his rib so that he can marry. And so far, they've given us six grandchildren. So what a joy it is to be here today and to be able to share. And thank you very much, uh, Reverend Oni. I nearly said canon. Bishop, you should whisper to your fellow bishops. These things need to happen. <laughs> but such a joy to be here. Now, friends, today is the beginning of Markfest, I was told. And I was invited to do that. To bring the word of God to you. Under the theme, hope beyond affliction. Hope beyond affliction. So we are going to be talking about hope. 
Because if you can't find hope in the church, if you can't find hope at the feet of Jesus Christ, where will you find hope? There is no other place. And I particularly today will be addressing the secure hope that we have when we believe. So I'm going to ask that we open into another text in Romans chapter 8. And I want to read from verse 26 to 39. Because I thought that this passage supplements the one in Lamentations perfectly. As it also presents the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 26 to 39. And this is what it says. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. And he who searches hearts knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. You hear that? For those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. In order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Hallelujah. Glorified. Now listen. Then Paul comes to a crescendo. And he says, what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also give, give us with, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died more than that who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. He could have actually written, for your sake we are being afflicted all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, no rulers, no things present, no things to come, no powers, no height, no depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Dear loving and gracious Father, we are so thankful to you because you are a God of hope. You restore hope to the hopeless. And you give help to the helpless. And so here we are in your presence, Lord. These people that are gathered here are not gathered to hear what I will say. For I too am hungry and I'm thirsty for your word. Now, Lord, fill my heart with your Holy Spirit. That your word that comes out of my mouth will be your word indeed. Give an expression as you will. And Lord, help me to decrease that only you shall increase. 
And may Jesus be exalted amongst us. That whatever circumstances, whatever situations, whatever turbulences there may be that we are going through, Lord, lift up our eyes that we may see Jesus. And I pray specifically for any here that came in, they did not know you, or maybe they had backslid from their faith. Lord, show them that there is hope, there is welcome at the cross of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let me begin first of all by telling you that when we talk about hope here, we are talking about the same hope that Paul talks about in Romans chapter 5 verse 5 when he says that the hope that we have never puts us to shame, never disappoints us. So when we talk about the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope that he gives, we are talking about a hope that is indestructible, a hope that does not disappoint, a hope that is not shameful. Now I'm sure each one of you at some point or the other, you have bought goods. And quite often, with some goods, they give you a warranty. For others, they don't even give you a warranty. I remember one time going to Soroti, we had gone to preach the gospel, and when we were put in the house where we were living, there was a pillow, there was no pillowcase on it. So I say to myself, well, we better go and buy ourselves a pillow. So a pillowcase. We went into the town, that's many years ago in the 90s, and I bought a second-hand pillow. I didn't need to buy a new one because even the new ones were not there anyway. So I bought one second-hand and I went home. And so I said, like a good person who wants his health, let me wash it first. And as I was washing it, it tore. <laughs> Fortunately, there was no warranty to it. I could not even take it back. But there are other things that are normally given a warranty, isn't it? When you buy a fridge or a television or goods of that nature. But it's rare, very rare, to even find a warranty that goes beyond three years. Many of them will give you one year, two years, three years, and that's it. And I'm looking at you as you look at me, and I sense that you realize I have glasses on my eyes. In other words, the warranty for my eyes also ran out, and I needed glasses to see better. Isn't it? I really needed glasses, and that's why I put on glasses. If I don't put on glasses, I will see men, but they look like, I don't want to finish that one. So even our body parts, at some point, they start giving out. And I'm beginning to feel it as we grow older, we are beginning to feel it. That there are things that have changed. When I married this beautiful girl, all my hair was black. What does it look like now? The warranty ran out, isn't it? Uh, the warranty ran out. And you know, it's very interesting even your earthly life at some point will last only a few decades, isn't it? So today we want to talk about the secure hope that never disappoints us. That hope that is given to all who believe. Let me begin with a story that of Billy Graham. Billy Graham died, of course, a few years ago. But Billy Graham was honored... And he was invited to a party so that they could honor him. An evangelist. For those of you who don't know who Billy Graham was, he was a great, great evangelist of the past century into this century. But mostly the last century. So he was given the opportunity to say something at this party where he, had, he was being honored. And this is what he said, and I want to read it as it is. And he said, I'm reminded today of Albert Einstein, the great physicist who, honor, who was honored by Time magazine as the man of the 20th century. Albert Einstein was once traveling in a, on a train when the conductor came down the aisle, punching the tickets of every passenger. When he came to Einstein, Einstein reached in his vest pocket 
He couldn't find his ticket, so he reached in his trouser pockets. It wasn't there, so he looked in his briefcase. He still couldn't find it. Then he looked in the se on the seat beside him. He still couldn't find it. So the conductor said to him, Dr. Einstein, I know who you are. We all know who you are. I'm sure you bought a ticket. Don't worry about it. Einstein nodded in appreciation. The conductor continued down the aisle, punching tickets. As he was ready to move to the next car, he turned around and saw Albert Einstein down on his hands and knees looking under his seat for his ticket. The conductor rushed back to Dr. Einstein and said, Dr. Einstein, Dr. Einstein, don't worry, I know who you are, no problem. You don't need a ticket, I'm sure you bought one. Now listen to what Dr. Einstein said. He looked at him and said, young man, I too know who I am. <laughs> what I don't know is where I'm going. Do you know where you're going? Huh? Do you know where you're going, my friend? These things happen. And you know, when Billy Graham was finishing that, he said that when I die, I want you to remember this. I not only know who I am, I also know where I am going. I know where I'm going. Years ago, over 46 years ago, I was a student at the University of Nairobi. I didn't know where I was going. And at that particular time, I would go to bed and I would ask myself a question. I now have told this testimony even here, but there may be those who haven't heard it. But I would go to bed and I would ask myself the question, what if I don't wake up? Where will I go? I had no hope. And there are many of us, if I ask you, where are you going when your life, when your warranty is over, where are you going? And you don't have an answer because you don't have hope. And you know people who are hopeless usually commit suicide. That's one of the most terrible things. You see life stops at the end of your rope of hope. And it does not matter who you are. When it comes to that question, that question comes to us exactly the same. Whether you're a student, you're a lecturer, you're a council member, you're whoever, clergyman, all of us, that question comes in exactly the same way. Where are you going? I'll tell you something else. You know, very soon after I've preached, you'll be, we'll be reading or reciting the Nicene Creed, but many of you don't know what happened. For the Nicene Creed, in the 4th century, which was written in the 4th century, there were 318 delegates. 318 delegates. But he said only 12 of them had not lost a part of their body in affliction, in suffering, in hardship, and whatever it was, and yet they were there to write a document that we recite up to today. Only 12. 318, imagine that, and only 306, I mean 306, each of them had lost an eye, had lost a hand, had lost a leg, and others were limping for their faith. What is it that made them so confident to keep following? It's because, friends, there is a hope that goes beyond the afflictions of this world. That you can say with the poor, no matter what comes, no matter what hardships there may be, I will still hold on because nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. That's what each of them knew. And so Jeremiah cries in lamentations and says, remember my affliction and my wanderings. 
the wormwood and the gut, the bitterness, the bitterness that I have gone through. And you know, when you read the book of Jeremiah, you start realizing how much he suffered. This is someone who at one point was even thrown into a pit with mud. He couldn't bring himself out. He went through every affliction that you would think you would go through. And eventually, because he was prophesying exile, he himself was a righteous man. He was a prophet. And yet when he, he proclaimed to the people the exile, when it came to the time of exile, Jeremiah was not spared. He was carried together with the exiles. He was carried together with the exiles. But even there, he had hope beyond affliction. He still believed in his God. And he never gave up. Friends, as I preach today, I want you to understand something. I'm not telling you that when you come to Christ, there will be no afflictions. That's not what I'm saying. Paul says, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12, he says, all who desire to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Do you hear that? And then in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, he actually says to us, through many tribulations we must enter the kingdom of God. So I don't want you to come to Christ expecting an easy right. You go to another church where they promise those things. And after they promise them to you, you go out into the real world and you suffer. I don't go to those kinds of churches. And I don't preach that kind of gospel. I'm inviting you to a hope that shakes the afflictions and makes way to see Jesus ahead there. That's the kind of hope I'm talking about. I'm not talking about a hope that is a softy, softy kind of hope. Through many tribulations, the Bible repeatedly, and I could bring you more and more verses concerning that, but I won't. Someone actually asked C.S. Lewis, for those of you who have read his books, Someone asked him a question. Why do the righteous suffer? You hear that? Now, C.S. Lewis was a professor in Cambridge. And amazing. If you've never read any of his books, please do. Because his books are so insightful, so provocative, they really help you. And if you're going through afflictions, I want to recommend one book, The Problem of Pain, still by C.S. Lewis. Now, so he was asked, why do the righteous suffer? Listen to his answer. He said, they are the only ones that can take it. What an insightful thing. And you understand why they can take it? Because they have hope. Because they have hope. I told you that when you have no hope, you die. You commit suicide. Without hope, you have nowhere to go. Hope is something that keeps us moving, that keeps us going. Can I also say to you, a Christian who knows no affliction may be walking in the opposite direction. Do you understand what I mean? Do you know what the opposite direction is? If you never face affliction by, by reason of your, of your faith especially, you better watch which direction. You may be following the wrong, the wrong crowd. You are not following Jesus. If you are following Jesus, you are going to through, go through. People will laugh at you. People will slander. People will shout. When I came to the Lord the very following day, after I came to the Lord, I was being opposed by my fellow students, especially the Ugandans who were at the University of Nairobi. They were opposing me. But you know what? Their opposition emboldened me, strengthened me to say, I'll go on. <clears throat> Hope beyond affliction. Now I want to talk about three things very quickly. The first one that I want to talk about, I want to say to you, my brothers and sisters, in Christ, 
we have a guaranteed hope. Guaranteed. That's what Paul is actually bringing out to us here. It's not guaranteed by the way you walk. It's not guaranteed by anything that you do. It's not even guaranteed by the church. But he says we have a guaranteed hope. Our sufferings as believers are the birth pangs of glory. The birth pangs of glory. When I feel my body is getting weak, I have arthritis, which I have managed very well. And just over two years ago, they told me I also had diabetes. And I said, welcome to the, to the, to the mix. <laughs> I don't know what will take me. I don't know what will take me. But listen, for me, each and every one of those are the birth pangs. Like a woman who goes into labor. I'm going through that labor. And at some point, I am going to be in glory. When I'm laid low, and they bring me, whether they bring me to St. Francis or wherever they would want to take me, I don't care. I will be in the presence of the Lord. And when they bring me, don't start saying, may you so rest in peace, because I'm already rested. Friends, Paul tells us that we have a guaranteed hope. He says in verse 28, that all things work together for good, for those who love him. And I have worked with this Jesus for the last 46 years. He has not done me any wrong. I just enjoy walking with him. <laughs> he has given us, he tells us, his Holy Spirit to conform us to Christ in all things. Yeah, that's what he has done. And so he says in Galatians chapter 4, verse 19, my children, for whom, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. You see, what we need to understand here is that God wastes no experience, even an affliction. Does not waste it to fit us for glory. If you must go through suffering so that you reach glory, he will take you through it. If you must go through diabetes to reach glory, he will take you through it. If you must go through arthritis to get to glory, he will take you through it. If you must go through a turbulent family, he will take you through it. But he knows where he's taking you. And at one, on one day, I will be clothed in white whiter than even this and when I am clothed in that white I will be in the presence of God and I will be waving the palm branches before him and I will be saying Lord Jesus thank you, thank you for the blood that you shed on the cross will you? what about you? one doctor who worked among lepers many years ago his name He's now passed away. His name was Dr. Paul Brandt. <laughs> you know lepers, people, le le leprosy kills your nerves. I'm not a medical doctor. For me, I'm a mathematician. I actually taught here for a few years before I decided I think preaching the gospel was a lot better. Because mathematics would only take you to earn your salary for the next 40 years. But the salvation that I preach will take you into the glory where you will never lose hope. So Dr. Paul Brandt, he worked among lepers. And lepers, you see, lose feeling. And that's why eventually their fingers break off and things like that. It's not a common thing these days. And he saw these people go through that kind of experience. But listen to what he said. Something that the Lord showed him because he was a Christian. He was a small man. And he said, thanks be to God for pain. Can you say that? <laughs> because you know what? 
When you feel pain, what do you do? You withdraw. A leper can touch fire without withdrawing the hand. You touch fire and you immediately withdraw. Thanks be to God for pain. Or maybe to use the word that we are using today, thanks be to God for afflictions. Because afflictions are quite often the opportunity that we have to know that we need to withdraw from pain. So that we may look ahead and we say, hey, is there another way that I can have hope? I like the verse in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11, that Moses uses to the children of Israel. Listen to this. He says, like an eagle that stirs up its nest, that flutters over its young, spreading out its wings, catching them, bearing, bearing them on its pinions. Now, you may not understand what all that means, but this is how the eagle teaches its young who are normally nested very high up, maybe on the crag, crags of a, of a rock. And so what the eagle does, it goes and picks up that young one to teach it to fly, flies very high, and lets go. And what do you think the young one will do? It starts fluttering its pinions, its wings. And it flutters and flutters and flutters. And when eventually it is too tired, you know what the ego does? The mother ego, the mother ego swoops down and places the young one on his back. That is what Jesus promises all those who believe. And God was saying these words to the children of Israel. He was actually telling the children of Israel, this is what I do with you. I take you through afflictions, but so that I may come, swoop under you and lift you up. And friends, I have seen him swoop and take me up again and again and again. And those who are believers, he takes you again and again and again. That is the hope for which I live. That it does not matter what affliction I'm going through, I know that the underneath me are the everlasting arms. As he says in verse 27, of Deuteronomy 33. Underneath are the everlasting arms. There is something very unusual that Paul says. And when I was reading it, I don't know if you realize that I emphasized it in verse 30. Because what Paul says in verse 30, let me start with verse 29 because that's where it, the thought comes from. He talks about those whom he foreknew. He foreknew. He predestined. Right? Those whom he found you, he, he predestined. It does not matter what the circumstances. He's not talking about the circumstances you go through. He's saying that when he follows you, he predestines you. And then he says, those whom we predestined, he also called. <clears throat> and those whom he called, he also justified. I'm not going to go through into all those words. But the last one is what is amazing for me. And I emphasized it when I was reading. And he says... And those whom he justified, he also glorified. Can you imagine? Believer. Can you imagine we are glorified? Listen, for those of you who are not believers, I'm simply boasting a little bit here. I'm simply trying to tell you that for those of us who are in Christ, we have been glorified. We have been seated before the Father we have been accepted, we've been glorified, we've been clothed in righteousness. That's what I'm talking about. And so Paul says, he phoned you, he knew you. And friend, you are here, you don't know Christ, he knows you. Even President Museveni usually says it, even last night he did. Huh? That this God is omniscient. That he knows everything that concerns you. He knows what afflictions you're going through. He knows what difficulties you may be going through. This God knows what you're going to go through even before it happens. And he says that those whom he foreknew, he then predestined. 
He predestined and then he called and then he justified and then what does he do? Then he lifts us up that we may sit with the princes and kings. You see, that's the hope for which we live. Glorify. That my glorification is as sure as today. It's as sure as I'm standing before you. It's as sure even as I'm talking to you. That when you are in Christ, irrespective of what circumstances may come your way, that you need to come to Jesus, that you may understand what it means to be glorified. That's why we are so, you know, so full of joy. And that joy is not moved by the afflictions. It's not the circumstances. That joy is a joy that goes beyond. In fact, Paul tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13 and 14, that the other thing that the Holy Spirit does is to seal us. Seal. Now listen, the vice chancellor is here. I suppose he signs all the certificates, don't you? I don't know how you do it, but I don't like it. I used to sign, and I think the large number of uh, certificates I signed was over 1,600. I said, wow. Why should I be doing this? And I wanted to digitize everything. 16,000, you sit down and you, you sign them. Anyway, so the point is, this God that we are talking about, in Ephesians he says that you have been sealed and each of those certificates that the vice chancellor signs is sealed. It belongs to Makerere University. It does not belong to any other. You can't graduate from Makerere and you say graduated from UCU where I was. Where I was. No, it doesn't. When you graduate from one, there's a seal there that says it's from Makerere. And listen, what does the seal mean? It means the certificate belongs to Makerere University, doesn't it, VC? And if, uh, if at some point you, 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 you go to that certificate wrongly, the next thing that they can do is they can take you to Senate and withdraw it. Makerere has the right to withdraw it. If you cheated in examinations to get your degree, they can withdraw it. Now, Paul takes that same idea, and now he says, you are sealed. What does that mean? It means you are mine. God says, you are mine. And the good thing with God, because your salvation does not depend on you, the certificate is never withdrawn. The certificate that I got in 1976 is permanent and beyond even a pension. You hear that? It is. So the sufferings that we go through, friends, do not take away anything from the hope that we hold. The hope that we hold is real and true. And that's what he's telling us. Do you have that hope? You know, I know where I'm going. The question is, do you? Yourself. Do you know where you are going? And what we are doing today is to say, come, and you will know where you are going. Come and join us. Because there is a band of believers who are walking with Christ, and they are saying that we are going to that place that is prepared for us. Secondly, Paul says to us that in Christ, we have guaranteed provisions. Verse 32. Guaranteed provisions. Listen to what he says. He says, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also give us with him everything we need? Graciously give us all things. Guaranteed provisions. Amazing. Now you may say, well, he gives us afflictions. He allows me to go through affliction. Yes. Because you need them. <laughs> When he knows you need them, he will give them to you. But he says that he will provide for us. The point is, when he does bring whatever circumstances, even afflictions, whether good things, whether cars, whether jobs, whatever it may be, whatever hardships he may bring, 
you may ask yourself the question, does God care? And you know what he points at? In verse 32, he says, he did not spare his own son. He says, do you realize that I gave the one who was dearest to my heart? Do you realize that I gave my son, my one and only son? And what Paul is saying, that if God gave what was dearest to him, if God gave a son and he had none left in heaven, if God gave like that, why wouldn't he take care of you? You know, I've met people who have said to themselves, I cannot come to Christ because I fear I will not get this and I will not get that. It's the same thing that I actually went through. I delayed coming to the Lord Jesus Christ because I kept on saying, you know, if I get saved, how will I find a girl <laughs> to marry? I thank God I never did that. I never waited. Because you know what? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If I had married before coming to Christ, who's, I would be marrying not the child of my God, but the child of the other one. And you know, it's better to be the, to be the son-in-law to my father in heaven than the son-in-law of the other one. You know what I mean. I don't want to be the son-in-law of the devil. That's the worst, things that, that the worst thing that can ever happen to you. And so I thought maybe God will not be able to handle my marital issues. And God says, I have already given the best I had in Jesus. I gave my only son. <laughs> and actually we are told in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20, that all God's promises find their yes in him. They find their yes in Jesus. And so friend, what the word of God is saying to you, God is the only one who is able. When you ask yourself, does he really care? Can he take care of me? Can he handle my situation? I know in a university, some people now start crying about fees. And you feel like the fees that you're going to pay, if you fail to pay, that will be the end of your life. Does God care? Those are the moments you ask yourself that question, isn't it? You ask yourself that question. Does God care? But this God that we are talking about, he says, I have already given you the very best I had. Because the one that he gave was a person in the Godhead. Because in the Godhead, there is God the Father, there is God the Son, there is God the Holy Spirit. And so the three persons, he said to God the Son, the one that he loved so much, friends, I have three sons. For not to offend my wife, I will say we have three sons. I can't give any of them. I love them dearly. Very, very dearly. I love each of my children. And I have, when, when they were young, I took care of them. I rolled with them on the floor. I did everything stupid with them. I love them. And yet even then, my love is not equal to the love that God had. Because his love was eternal. His love was a love where they had inseparable fellowship. His love was such that if when, when Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden, it did not only hurt the Father, it hurt the Son, it hurt the Holy Spirit. In other words, they shared in, if you wish, I can call it the afflictions of our sin. And this God said, you go. Because I don't want to have heaven without these people whom I love. That's how much he loves you. He has already given so much. And he says there's no provision that he cannot take care of. So Paul says to us, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Assured provision, assured care, assured presence, assured love, assured hope.
The hope that I have cannot be disappointed. I know where I'm going even in the midst of afflictions. The question is, do you also know? Do you know? That's what we are talking about here. And you know he's telling us that look, when we come to him in prayer, in the midst of our afflictions, when we have so many questions, he says, Jesus shows the Father the scars in his hands. And he says, Father, you have already given your best. You have already given your best. That's what Paul is talking about. So what these people are praying for are just daily bread. <laughs> Whether it is a feast, it's just daily bread. Whether it's getting a wife or a husband, it's just daily bread. They're small things. Look at these scars. You're the one who sent me. Father, you have already given your best. What I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters, in Jesus, God has already given his best. Whatever you pray for is too small. I'm not saying you don't pray for it. I'm saying, yes, go ahead and pray for it because before the Father's throne, there is one who bears the scars and shows them to the Father. Because the Bible says that Jesus is seated on the right hand of God. The father. I like what a little girl said. I'm sure most of you know Psalm 23 verse 1. Verse 23 verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now for a little mind, if the Lord is your shepherd, why do you say you don't want him? So the little girl instead said, the Lord is my shepherd, that's all I want. Mm, that's all I want. And friends, that's all I want. Whether I'm lacking or I'm full, and that's what Paul talks about at the end there. And he says, for I'm sure that neither death nor life, in other words, whether something bad or good happens, it does not matter what will happen. I have this God. And that's all I want. That's all I want. Actually, the Bible is very interesting. In the same chapter of Deuteronomy 22 that I quoted earlier, 